Thanks to director Ashima Chibar, a consummate actress like Rani Mukherjee, Dalin, has the right connections. Moves from Norway straight into an Ekta Kapoor set. This sums up Mrs. Chatterjee versus Norway. We all are aware, and to the unversed, the story goes of a lady who's written a book, Journey of Mother, loses her two children to the Norwegian government on the ground that she had physically abused the children by beating them. There begins a cultural tug of war between Indian parents on the one hand and a Norwegian standpoint. The children are read by sparing the rod. In contrast to spare the rod and spoil the child theory that we in India have always believed. Finally, on the intervention of the government of India, I think the then finance minister, the then minister for external affairs was Mr. S. M. Krishna. They go about uh, for ensuring that the Norwegian government hands over the children to the mother who comes back to Kolkata. This is the story. Look at this linear story of a mother fighting the system, a Western system, to ensure she retraces and retrieves her two children from a foster home called Benfred in Norway. Norway. And how she fights, A, the system, and B, the systemic differences instead of the systemic biases. Could have been a wonderful avant-garde narrative. It could have been a story of two cultures committed to the child, committed to the cause of the welfare of the child, but having different viewpoints on how a child can be brought up. Unfortunately, that is not to happen. I think what Ashima Chibar does, and I've not read the book, so I wouldn't know how true she is to the narrative, but from a filmatic perspective, Ashima Chibar being a lady could have brought in a completely new perspective of a lady's instinctive governance over child welfare and put it up in conflict with a systemic uh, list of do's and don'ts, I'll make Norwegian, and made a contrast at two levels. One, a mother versus a system, and two, an Indian way of looking at things, and a Western way of looking at it. And when I say Western, I'm sorry I'm using a very big basket because uh, say, to say western is anything east of uh, Maharashtra, uh, western Maharashtra is like saying anything South Indian is Tamil Nadu. So without going into the intricacies of what the west means because we need to understand the west is not, is not a polarized group. They themselves have different views on how to write children, surely. This is Norwegian, Norway century. This Norway-centric approach of the system versus a mother who comes from an Indian background, is a graduate, is not able to come to terms with her husband, played by Ani Brahm Bhattacharya, who is so caught up in getting his nationality uh, in the country, his uh, documentation to be a citizen of the country, that he doesn't mind or is blissfully unaware of what's happening around him and is also willing to play villain to the whole class, which turns to be tardy. This is where the film loses its grip. In fact, the film starts on a wrong count with Rani Mukherjee over the top shouting, can't people revisit Mother India? Look at that master scene of Nargis with which Mehbu Khan starts off his narrative. Look at what Sharmila Tagore doesn't suffer from where Ashit Sen starts off his narrative. 
Look at Suchitra Sen in Mamta. Look at how she carries on her narrative. But here yeah, that's all. So she's over the top, screaming on the roads of Norway because her children have been literally kidnapped by the workers of the welfare and taken away to a child foster home. Finally, she does the extreme, the unbelievable. She kidnaps the kids, etc., etc. Obviously, you kidnap a kid. The government is not going to give the kid back to you. So the system gets even more toxic. Uh, investigations go on. Layers and layers of uh, judicial interpretation happen. As long as the case remains in a court, the narrative is gripping. But unfortunately, a lot happens outside of this. The manner in which the kids are kept in a foster home, uncared, and then after she gets the children, thanks to the intervention of Nina Gupta as a minister, nice performance, very small, how the government of India intervenes and gets the child in. I'm sure if it was another government, they would have got it a little more mileage than they do in this one. And then she comes to India. There is a conspiracy to keep the children away from her. There's a conspiracy on money, on monetary matters. The whole thing is a royal mess. The film attempts to be a salute to Rudyard Kipling's statement that God could not be at all places and thus he created mothers. But I think this mother played sometimes with great balance, but very often over the top, Rani Mukherjee could well place the blame on Ashima Chipper's interpretation than her own performance. <coughs> now, what could have made a difference? Today, when you look at a heroine-oriented film, you know directors don't have too many, too many people to go to. They would either go to Rani or to Vidya Balan or maybe to Tabu. And Rani being a, a more commercially acceptable person to, than to Tabu. The choice again comes down to Tabu versus uh, Rani. And Rani was the choice. So Rani had the responsibility of telling Ali Ashima Chipa that she would have liked to make for the good of the cinema. And I hope she did. And maybe she failed, I won't know. That a lot of the melodrama that goes in the making of the character, Mrs. Chatterjee, could have been toned down, made far more powerful and potential than they turn out to be. This notwithstanding, Mrs. Chatterjee versus Norway is not is an opportunity to see Rani Mukherjee in a decent performance. Of course, it's an, it is an inconsistent performance. It's also an opportunity lost to tell a story grippingly, tell a story within the parameters of a clean, intellectually honest conflict, which is what, which is not what Ashima Chibar brings on board. And that is where Mrs. Chatterjee fails. I'd sign off. Thanking uh, Abhinav and uh, Datu and hope to have your comments on how you like the review. See the film too and do write back if you differ with me on any aspects or about the manner in which the review is out. Thank you.